Are the world of the Pathless and Abzu connected in some way? What about Journey? Does it mix in somehow too? In this video, I'll go over all the connecting points between these three games, and we can come to a conclusion if these game worlds are connected. Before we start, I just want to point out we'll be going into spoiler territory for The Pathless, Abzu, and Journey in this video. These are all amazing games, and if you haven't played them yet and plan to, I suggest playing them before watching this video. I'd also like to quickly say this entire video is based on my own impressions and interpretations of these games. While I've done lots of research and watched and listened to other people's opinions, each player may have a different feeling pulling on their own life experiences so they may interpret things differently, and that's part of the wonder of these games. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. Besides the similarity in gameplay between the three games, I'm going to list the main shared concepts that I believe tie these worlds together, and then I'll dive into each one deeper and explain how they seem to connect the worlds together. All three games share four main points. They all revolve around past civilizations that have crumbled and we play as a hero, harnessing and using a mystical energy to restore the world and bring back life. They all contain godlike figures that imbue the hero with this mystical power. As well, they all link back to a spiritual realm and share the color red. While these all sound like typical video game tropes, I aim to show how these have to be more than mere coincidence or easter eggs and prove that all of these stories happened in the same world, albeit perhaps at different times and places. The first link, Power. One of the strongest links and connections we have between these games is power or energy. In The Pathless, Abzu, and Journey, all of the hero characters have the ability to harness and release a mystical healing power from within themselves. In The Pathless, we see the hunter harness this power over and over again. It is shown each time the hunter defeats a corrupted tall one when she channels this power to cleanse them and release them from their curse. She waves her hands and seems to pull this power from within into a blast that is able to cure them. In addition to this, while roaming the lands, you may also stumble upon corrupted animals where the hunter can also draw on this power to cure them. In Abzu, the diver is able to draw out orbs of cleansing power and restore it to the sacred wells, thus restoring power and bringing life back to these areas of the ocean. The diver is also able to activate small hidden pools to either create or release the life that is trapped within, again harnessing this mystical power. Likewise, in Journey, our cloth hero uses a power from deep inside. Shown in the form of noises and bursts of light, it is used to rejuvenate and restore other creatures of the desert, freeing them and restoring their life where they were once dormant. What adds to the theory that this is the same energy shared between all three of these heroes is how it's depicted in the world around them. In Abzu, swimming through an old abandoned temple, we see hieroglyphs on the wall that depict the ancient civilization taking energy from a large well coming up from under the ocean and storing it in red jars. Remember the red jars as they'll be important later. We see the people take this energy, use it to further their lives, help advance their civilization, and then return the power back to the ocean, allowing the cycle to continue. It's important to note that the power is depicted as a form of water and is coming from within the planet itself. In the Pathless, whenever the hunter cleanses a tall one of their corruption, the curse explodes into a ball of light that transforms into a ghostly pool of water where the god changes into an ethereal form. Once freed, they reach into this water and pull out a single arrow made of this energy, and the hunter fires it high into the sky, cleansing the plateau of the curse. Again, the energy is coming from water that leads directly into the planet. In Journey, we don't see where the power itself comes from or what form it takes besides the red cloth. However, in the paintings of the past, it shows the energy coming up from the center of a mountain, almost like a volcano bursting out into the skies. This creates the stars, life, and energy these people use. While it's not shown explicitly, this does seem very similar to the other two games. The power is coming from within the planet itself, who's to say that it's not in a water form inside the mountain, and it's used in the same way as the other games. These similarities add to my theory of a shared world. We have the same power source at the center, just perhaps in different areas and times of this planet's existence. One story belongs on some island out in the middle of the ocean, 
another somewhere in the far off desert, and the last below the ocean itself? The second link, the tall ones. Throughout your journey in each game, there's always some kind of higher power or godlike figure that helps the hero of the journey. In the Pathless, this is very clearly described to us in the Tall Ones. Through the lore of the world, we are explicitly told that the island and world started with the Eagle Mother and she laid five eggs. These eggs would hatch to become the Tall Ones and gods of this island. The first Tall One is Cernos the Elk, then Sorrow the Lizard, then Nimu the Snake, and lastly Kumo the Bear. These gods each ruled over a plateau on the island and bestowed gifts to the people who lived there. While we never see the Tall Ones in their original forms, we only see them in their fiery red corrupted form after being taken control of by the God Slayer, and then we see them again after the Hunter has cleansed them and they return to a common blue, ghostly version of their original form. We do also see the Eagle Mother in her corrupted form, and then cleansed by the Hunter taking on the same glowing blue form, but in an interesting twist, she is also reincarnated as a living eagle that helps the hunter on their journey. This is important, as in Abzu, paintings on the wall show the people worshipping a shark almost as if it were a god of the ocean. They follow it and find the energy much like it seems the Tall Ones did for the people of the plateaus. While we play as the diver, we follow a living great white shark that looks very similar to the ones depicted in the paintings. A long ways into the journey, the shark is injured, and while the diver tries to help or save it, the shark ends up dying and the diver is injured. Flash forward a little bit, and the shark returns in an ethereal glowing blue form, just like the tall ones in the pathless. It proceeds to use energy from within to restore the body of the diver and give them more power than they had previously. This new form glows with power and allows the diver to swim even faster than before, allowing them to team up and take out the machines once and for all. Not only does this already seem to imply the shark is similar to the tall ones, it makes me think this could be the fifth egg from the eagle mother that was never explained in the pathless. In Journey, when nearing the top of the mountain, our hero, the red cloth person, is out of energy and on the brink of death, when six ghostly visages appear out of the cold and restore both life and power to the hero. This transforms him, giving him a glow similar to the diver in Abzu after being remade by the shark. They are then able to make it to the mountain peak to then finish the cycle, restoring the energy to the mountain. Six tall ones, six ghostly visages. Is it possible that this is just a different representation of the same thing? The three stories also deal with rebirth or reincarnation. The Eagle Mother shows us in the Pathless that after being corrupted and then freed, she was able to be reincarnated as a real eagle that joined the hunter on her journey. In Abzu, even though the diver is a robot, the Great White Shark is able to restore their body after being injured and helps him complete his quest. In Journey at the very end, the Cloth Hero sacrifices their life to bring the power back to the mountain, and through this act, we see the energy soar high into the sky, making its way back to the beginning of the game, where a new Cloth Hero is born, ready to complete the cycle again. These stories of reincarnation seem to prove that the energy of this world has the power to bring life back and establish rules that all three games follow, where life after death is real and possible. The third link, the shark. Going back to the godly shark in Abzu, there are a few very well hidden but obvious points linking the worlds together that I'd like to point out. In the pathless we know the tablet speaks of five eggs being laid, with no mention of the fifth god anywhere to be found. On the same plateau, there's a temple with a room surrounded by statues of the Tall Ones. All the gods can be seen here, except the first statue on the left is missing its head. But when we look at the floor, you can see a shark head broken off and laying there that looks very similar to the shark from Abzu. In the realm of the snake, Nimu, there's a tablet that speaks of Basila living in the water and both giving and taking life. Nowhere else in the game is the name Basilla mentioned, and we already know the names of the other four Tall Ones, which leads me to believe that perhaps Basilla is the name of the fifth Tall One. In an interesting note aside, an update to the game has removed this text from the tablet, replacing it with, This text is worn down and impossible to read. It's not known why this change was made, but it's very interesting. While exploring the land of the Pathless, there are secret shells that look exactly like ones that you collect in Abzu. If you collect eight of these shells in the Pathless, they open a secret door in the first plateau. 
Inside here, we see a great white shark floating around in the air, glowing blue, looking exactly like how the tall ones did after being cleansed. Comparing the shark to the one in Abzu, they again look almost identical, minus the scar on the one in the Pathless. Perhaps this proves that the shark really is a god and helped the people in Abzu find the power they needed. There's also a meditation statue that is identical to the ones in Abzu and the bodies of some people wearing clothes similar to what was shown in the paintings, further linking them together. The shells, the large shell creature, the meditation stone, the clothes, and the great white shark all being in both games seems a little too much to be a coincidence or easter egg. Could Basila, the tall one, be reincarnated as the great white shark that helps the diver in Abzu? Or perhaps because there is no record of Basila, the fifth god in the pathless, the events of Abzu could have already happened, maybe Basila was the first child, and after its people were led to ruin, it was wiped from history. The fourth link, the spirit realm. Another piece that links both Abzu and the pathless together is the idea of a physical manifestation called the spirit realm. In Abzu, the diver is transported to a mystical place whenever they are returning the power back to the wells of the ocean. Here they float around under beautiful glowing blue arches and see ghostly visions of creatures they have restored back to life. While nothing is ever explicitly stated about the spirit realm, we get some interesting details in the pathless. The pathless speaks of powerful artifacts that allow mortals to look into the spirit realm. This lets them see the world like the gods see. The hunter uses an artifact like this to help her along her journey, revealing corruption, hidden paths, and hidden power throughout the world. Near the end of the hunter's journey, her bow is destroyed and she's pulled into the spirit realm by the four tall ones she had previously rescued. Here they bestow another great power in the form of a new bow. Not only is she visited by all four gods again, but all around her is a mysterious water and you can see in the background they all appear to be under one of the beautiful arches that we first saw as the diver in Abzu. The fact that both games share the same spiritual realm tells us that this is more than just a coincidence. The fifth link, the color red. The last link in this puzzle is the color red. I told you we'd get back to this. All three game heroes share a very similar shade of red, and this is an important part of the puzzle. In Abzu, we saw paintings of people carrying the power from the wells in red jars, and eventually when they made machines that could harness this power directly, they all had a red triangle built inside them where they would store the energy. This is the same with the diver. That same red triangle shows how they were able to carry that power inside them and use it to bring back life to the oceans. In Journey, the cloth hero's robes are completely red. The original people in the paintings are always depicted in white and black robes, and this hero is clad completely in red, like the creatures of the world, and like the power that they use to harness to build their civilization. We know that the hero is reincarnated power passed down from the mountaintop to help restore the creatures and lead the people back to the mountain. Because they are this embodiment of the power, they can harness the power and are colored red symbolizing the ability to carry this energy, just like Abzu. Likewise in the Pathless, the hunter's robes are a very similar red. She's able to hold the power inside her and channel it to cleanse the plateaus of corruption and end the God Slayer's curse. We even see her take the corrupted energy from the Eagle Mother and put it inside herself, plucking the corruption like a ball of watery energy the similarities to Abzu are too much to deny. As nothing is explicitly stated in any of the games, the best I can come up with is a rough theory as to how the three games overlap or connect in terms of an overarching story. Please keep in mind this is just one interpretation and may be wrong or misplaced, and you may very well have a better theory. If you do, please let me know in the comments down below as I'm really curious to hear what you think. My theory is this. Abzu and the Pathless overlap and take place almost at the same time and the same place. The Pathless creation story speaks of the Eagle Mother flying over the oceans, looking for a place to rest, and the ground beneath the ocean rises to meet her, creating the first island. She then laid five eggs, and one of these eggs was Basila, a great white shark that ruled the oceans. Humankind was created and built a society around Basila and the energy that they were able to harvest from the ocean. Over time, the civilization's greed caused them to use too much of the power from the ocean, draining the water levels and killing off their people. Because the oceans were drained, this exposed one of the temples with the meditation stone and is where Basila came to be trapped that we find hidden in the pathless. All the while this was happening, 
The Tall Ones ruled the plateaus and nurtured life until the God Slayer spread his corruption and destroyed life on these islands. This is where the pathless story begins and the hunter fights to free the land from corruption. Once free, she unlocks the hidden door with Basilla inside, freeing the Tall One and allowing it to rejoin the oceans where it is reincarnated as a living great white shark. This is where the story of Abzu comes in and the diver takes their journey to restoring the oceans. The people of the desert in Journey would have lived and died in a similar time to the people of Abzu, just in a different region of the world where the ocean does not reach. Then, as Journey is a cycle of rebirth, it is constantly repeating its hero's story, possibly until the God Slayer's corruption ends and the world is free from the curse. Well, there we have it. To me this definitely shows that these three worlds are connected and gives me great hope that the next game from Giant Squid may be set in the same world as well. What do you think? Is there anything I missed, or am I grasping at straws here? I'd love to hear your opinion and discuss, so leave a comment with any thoughts you may have down below. If you liked the video, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps me out. And as always, happy gaming.